Hello everyone, this is Jimmy and welcome to episode 16 of Volcano Black. Last episode we did the unthinkable. We killed the Ender Dragon for which we are rewarded with 16 Ender Pearls. What would I do without these? Um, and now there's only a handful of quests left. I imagine we are quite near the end of the pack. Uh, for what it's worth, I don't intend on doing these uh, challenges because they just sound very boring. Um, all right. So, let's do these two quests, because they look easy. We need to fill a goblet with vampire, vampiric ointment in order to make steel donuts, I guess. Some unique props thing, I don't know. The goblet itself, easy enough. And the vampiric ointment... Uh, ooh, we've made these before. Right, it's just a pixie. Let's see. You make a pixie. We make a bottle. Uh, bottle block. And we click them together. Alright, well, uh, doesn't seem too bad. Go in there. Thank you. And then with that, we can make, uh, we dip it in blood. Sorry, Pixie. I hope you enjoy blood. All right. Um, I'm honestly, I have no clue what that's for. That's to make the steel donut. Um, I assume there's a plant that has something to do with this. Let's break out the uh, break out the unique crops book and do some reading. Here we have the donut steel crop. So an original crop, licensed and copyrighted by the Yula crop. Um, may pop out of the ground and try to kill you if you harvest it. A method exists where all damage you take from trying to hit them can be can be redirected may exist. I'm not sure that was a real sentence, but uh, I assume right click any non-creature non block What's a goblet for? Who knows? I imagine I'm going to die trying to figure out how this thing works, so I uh, may as well die on camera. First things first, we have to craft the seed. So I'm going to assume it's donut seeds that make donut steel. Seems like a reasonable uh, assumption, although the documentation book is not uh, explicitly clear about that. But anyways, um, let's grow it. It might need bone meal to grow. It's definitely bright enough here. Oh no, there it goes. Uh, let's turn farting back on as well. The uh, farting from Darkcraft turns off each time you restart the game. So anyways, while that grows... I'm going to take our vampiric ointment. It says right click any non player, non boss creature. So I assume this is some like voodoo type stuff where I find one of the chickens I hear running around here. Hello, chicken. We can like link it to that. Yeah. And then all right, we have a goblet. Place the goblet. Please put in a goblet placed on the ground. I suspect what happens then is any damage we take. It's set to the chicken, I guess. Let's uh finish growing the seeds and find out. In total, we need four pieces of donut steel. So, worst case, even if this doesn't work, we can just... It sounds like the mob that comes out might just one-shot us. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the bone meal doesn't work. All right, well, let's... I mean, let's see what happens. Okay. Absolutely nothing. Let's try something slightly different. Last time I harvested it by uh, right clicking it. Let's left click it. There we go. So a mob comes out who tries to kill us. Ow. Oh, that's my own fire. And is it died? I can't actually tell. Oh, I see. We have to link it with the... Uh, Right, like it's not actually taking damage from my attacks. Alright, we have to link it with the goblet and kill it that way. I see. Uh, is it done chasing me? Alright, let me make another... Um, in fact, can I just break this one? Yeah, okay, so any damage I take gets redirected to this thing. So if I make a few more doses of vampiric ointment, the trick should be to, first of all, find that guy again. Uh, maybe he despawns after a minute or two. Alright, let's just spawn another one in then. Um, 
but we want to let's see, holy grail find you and then take this bound ointment but will you stop hitting me please put it in there aha and now he's hitting himself stop hitting yourself hey stop hitting yourself there we go we got a steel donut um and we just have to do that until uh I get four. I believe it takes four of such donuts to make the Volcano Master. I wonder if there's some mob you can find that has enough hit points to, like, enough hit points and regen that it can just tank for you indefinitely. It does say it has to be non boss, so maybe there's not a clever workaround there, but I'm thinking if this could be useful against something like the, uh, like the Gaia Guardian 2, which I apparently am not good enough to beat with my current gear. Who knows? Being able to fly is nice though. Means he can't hit me. When all said and done though, uh, I have four steel donuts. These are, as you can see in the Or Dictionary, they're effectively steel ingots, but this pack has no special use for steel ingots. So let's just clean up our book parts and move on. All right, next uh, we have exactly one quest to do, and that's make the Dark Nether Star. Um, all right, we need to make Ruthenium and Cadmium. These both, yeah, are just chemicals that have to be made. Let's see. Cadmium comes off of exactly, oh no, any CD? Oh, then I should have plenty of that. Yeah, in fact, I, I do have plenty of that. Um, I need two blocks of it. For Dark Nether Star, and I think I need I need a Dark Nether Star for the Scarab to go to uh, Atom Atom, and I need a Dark Nether Star block for the Volcano Master. So we're gonna need a lot more of this. Is there a better source than CDs? Nope. All right, let's just go process a lot of CDs then. Thankfully, we have a plant that can just grow it for us in relatively quick order. All in all, we're going to need a reasonably high number of these CDs, right? It's uh, two blocks, so 18 CDs per Dark Nether Star times 10 Dark Nether Stars, 180 CDs. So I set up a system to automate it. All it is is uh, the plant gets clicked by a player simulator, so it, you know, it, it simulates players. Uh, it clicks it, I assume it's a right click, um, or perhaps we can configure that here. Yeah, it's a right click. Uh, it clicks the plant constantly, and then a world item importer, basically a you know vacuum popper of sorts, picks up the item and stores them into a chest here. Uh, I guess a chest is probably not quite enough slots, huh? I'll add a couple more chests to hold more items, but um, we can then come take these at a later time and process them into cadmium. In the immediate future, though, I only need one Dark Nether Star. In fact, we're going to have to kill another nine Withers to get more um, to make, I guess, a Dark Rune. How do I do this? Dark. Not quite sure. Uh, oh, here's it. Right click a yada yada with their Dark Nether Star. Okay. If I read the quest right, step one is to make a Runic Tenebrous Core. Place it, right click that with a dark nether star. Um, I assume we could pick that up if needed. Hey, it stole my buffs, or maybe I just had at some point I didn't get them back. Um, all right, and that gets us a dark rune, and I guess that doesn't even consume the core. Cool. Uh, with that, we can make a scarab, which actually well requires three dark runes and another dark nether star. So let's grab all the withers. All the wither skeleton skulls I have, all uh, six of them. That'll do for now. Some soul sand. Apparently, really bad at typing. And go kill the withers. It's just occurred to me that there are no endermen here. I guess mob spawning is just off everywhere. Um. Anyways, now that we've killed the dragon, we get access to uh, uh bedrock here, which makes subsequent wither killing very easy. Just dig a hole down here and summon the wither under the bedrock. Or he gets stuck and we can easily kill him without him firing back. When you're done, just jump in the portal. 
While making the Scarab, I found something interesting. The emblem of the Golden Scarab nullifies all potion effects, good or bad. Um, assuming Wither counts as a potion effect, is it is it technically not a potion effect? There's no potion of Wither, is there? I don't know, but if it counts, uh, maybe it'd be useful. I mean, if it gets rid of all good ones as well, so like we don't get absorption or whatever, but maybe it'll be useful against the, uh, against the, whatchamacallit, Guy Guardian boss that I'm still not going to fight, but I keep bringing it up anyways. But whatever, that gets consumed to make the Scarab. So the quest complete here. Now we have to create a little portal. So it's made from, I think it's a bunch of sandstone, right? Yeah, let me get a fair chunk of sandstone and we'll go ahead and make that portal. Uh, two stacks ought to be enough. It's just a little sandstone um, grind portal, whatever you want to call it. Probably could have built it in a way that's a bit easier to get to. Because I'm not very good at parkour. And then you throw the scarab into it. And it becomes the atom portal. So we want to go there to get... Uh, I guess we have to... I need a dirty coin to make the spawn greater sprite. It's me. Oh my gosh, that's disgusting. <laughs> um, Alright, and we need a dirty bone block. And then... I assume then we just kill the greater sprite. For this one, we need a feral heart, which I assume comes from killing one of the pharaohs. So, uh, do I have everything I need? I mean, probably, right? I have food, I have a weapon, I have both range and melee weapons, building blocks. This should be fine. Let's go. This place is foggy. So anyways, uh, oopsies, before I leave, I should mark the portal so I know how to get back. There you go. And then I'm looking for a uh, pyramid. I see something on the map here. This is definitely not a pyramid. All right, let me see if I can find... Wait. Nope, it still isn't one. A little bit spot. Right. No, I'm leaving. Bye. I think I'm coming up on a pyramid. Uh, at least on the mini-map, it looks pyramid-like. Yep, here it is. All right, so we just have to go in it, I think. These are doors. And then in here, there are a whole lot of mobs. Jeez. Uh, did I bring torches? Huh. One thing I forgot. I guess we'll just be trying to break the spawners without being able to see. Uh, this may be a mistake. Now we're fine. There's a lot of mobs in here. And they have a lot of armor. Let's use our better weapon. This is a sharper sword. Hmm, that's a lot better damage. Remember, there's one thing we need that I probably won't be able to find in here. And those are royal torches, so I need gold ingots for this. Um, so I'm going to mark this. And then let's head back to our portal. Only 150 meters away. And uh, head back to our base, grab some torches and royal torches. And then we can come back here. Ooh. That dash really catches me off guard. Back with supplies this time and torches so we can see. All right, so that's the top of the pyramid. There's really nothing interesting up there. What we're interested in is getting to the center of the bottom row. Um, there are traps in here like uh, that. If you right click a trap with your pickaxe, I think it disables them. So it doesn't really matter if you just run into them like they're not life-threatening or anything but uh good idea i guess to disable the traps anyways my goal here is to find the staircase down for now oh, ran over another one no clue where that was the fact that i don't care about being lit on fire probably makes the uh the trap noticeably less dangerous Zooming the mini map in can also help you. It's a little hard to tell exactly where the tunnels go, but uh, it'll at least be able to tell you where you have or haven't been. It's based on the color. And here we have it, the ladder down. So you find the ladder down to the second level, um, at which point the mini map seems to, I guess it superimposes the two. 
it's less useful now. But uh, I'm looking for a central room that has a mummy chamber in it. There are some loot rooms in here. So, oh, I guess I could have just stayed here and gotten gold here. Ow. Rude. And inevitably, one of these chests is also going to contain coal. Whatever. Uh, I do need coins and bones. I'll grab those. Found it. The Pharaoh's room. So, in here, uh, let's first disable all the traps. There's a sarcophagus. And if you place royal torches on, I believe it's these four corners. Okay, not on those four corners. Uh, let me figure out exactly where you're supposed to place these. Well, there's a way you get the sarcophagus to open. I think all I forgot to do was right-click the sarcophagus. Yeah. And that summons the boss. He's, uh, he hits kind of hard. It's very hard. So, make sure you have some decent armor. I think, uh, you can also just, like, box him in. But that's cheesy, right? We are legitimate fighters here. Ow, 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 ow. Alright, and then when he's dead, he drops the heart, which is what we were after. Um, cool. So there's a Pharaoh's heart. Now, the other, I just want to see how much I need nine bones and a coin. So I've already gotten the coin, and all I need from here is a couple more bones. Bones also spawn in ores, so I could just uh, dig for those. But I'm going to explore the rest of this. Um, actually, let's go back to the sarcophagus room. Having killed the pharaoh that spawns out of it, where was that room? You can now loot the good stuff in the sarcophagus. He was buried with a halo, and I guess that's it. Yeah, one one loot item per um, some other useless stuff. But there's some uh, neat relics you could get from from doing more of these temples. Frankly, though, I don't think it's terribly worthwhile. But hey, go away. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to look for a few more bones. Ended up having to raid some other structures to get uh, nine bones. But ooh, eventually I have nine, so let's get out of here. With that trip to Atom complete, we now have everything needed to summon the greater sprite. Right? Yeah. Except for me. So, uh, how much player flesh have I accumulated? Oh! I was about to say how much do I have to cut myself to get the rest of it, but uh, you drop a little bit each time you die, and from all my dying, I've slowly accumulated enough flesh to make me. I'm ugly. Anyways, um, this all goes on to the runic altar. A so, couple runes that I had already crafted, and that'll craft the summoning thing. Um, looks like it takes a fair bit of mana, so we'll just let that run for a bit, and uh, I'll complete that craft in a second. But uh, that's... I guess that's the only thing I can do, because we just have to wait for it now. When it's done being blasted with mana, let's complete this craft. Oh cool, we get the runes back. I mean, I guess that makes sense. Crafted on the altar. Uh, I didn't expect that, though. Anyways, um, I guess we just have to spawn it and kill it. Hopefully it doesn't... There, let's go summon it over here. Where uh, we're far from our base in case it actually is dangerous. Okay. No, it's harmless enough. We got a greater sprite heart. Which I presume we use to summon the guardian of sprites. Four. Okay, uh... Oh shoot, that means I'm gonna need a lot of bones. Well, I guess, uh, how many... For this thing, rings. I think I had coins. I think I had four coins. I just need to go get another lot of bones. Yeah, I have plenty of coins. All right, back to Adam to farm bones. Uh, they do spawn underground, so I'll just mine for them. My strategy thus far has been to well, first I enchanted a uh, fire diamond pickaxe with fortune five from our mana enchanter for some reason i can't enchant the end forge pickaxe that way uh, maybe it's because it's unbreakable like it's default unbreakable um i don't know but whatever this is capable of mining bone ore and in fact i should get a lot oh boy i got 48 off my first vein um actually that's all i need huh 
I may have overthought the process. I made a nullifier, effectively that's just like a, a dev null, dank null, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then I took the nutrition module to automatically feed me. I was ready to go mining for days, and uh, it turns out I just needed to go mining for seconds. Um, Alright, well I guess up we go. Now though, it is unavoidable. I have to get lots of my own meat. It hurts to get your own meat. Um, so I need how much of it? Nine per nine times three, twenty-seven pieces. All right. Well, uh, I guess this is a chance we can even use our health processor. I'm kind of curious. Is a diamond knife better? We get like more. No, I think it, I think it just has more durability. A third of the spawn eggs is just about done. Uh, I'm thinking it might actually be worthwhile to invest in using some more better mana spreaders for this, but whatever. The and the final recipe is a very high mana consuming one, so having better mana spreaders will make it take a little bit less time. But anyways, sorry little guys. Give me your hearts. Three more hearts. Alright, perfect. Just kidding, I only had three hearts total. I accidentally left one of them left. Whoopsies, can't have that happen. There we go, four hearts. According to the quest book, the Guardian of Sprites has to be fought in the... has to be fought in Atom. So, uh, let's go back to Atom for that. There's one more thing I think we might need in this Grave Robber's map. Let's bring it with us and just see where it leads. First of all, though, the Guardian of Sprites. Where'd it go? Hello? Like, in me? Uh... Oh, there it is. I guess it can, like, fly. Well, I, two can play at that game. What do I kill this thing? Hold on, you can just hit it. Come on, we're fine. This Guardian flies extremely fast, and it is very hard to hit in melee. So, uh, I'm just shooting at it. Now that it's low, though, I'm also running out of flight power. I want to make sure I can actually pick up the whatever it drops when it dies. And it can just dive underground like that, which makes it all that much more annoying. Eventually, it kind of just died. It still had, like, 20% of its health left, and it just disappeared, so I didn't get it on camera. But, uh, I got the heart. It gave a totem of undying, too. All right, um, next up, let's follow this map, shall we? So we need to go northeast, this way. We're getting close. Somewhat curious what's buried here. I have a suspicion, and uh, when we get it, let's see if my suspicion is right. Whoa. The... All right, let's clear this out a little bit. My suspicion is that... Oh, one more guy. Give me some peace and quiet, would ya? Uh, the Volcano Master requires one item that we don't have yet, and that is the Idol of Labor. It doesn't have a recipe, but it's like, looks, you know, legendary and stuff. I suspect it's what's buried here, or at least perhaps it's a candidate for what's buried here. Um, let's just look around. I assume it's going to be like the uh, vanilla buried treasure where somewhere underground. I'm just about to ready to give up on this treasure hunt. So if we take a look at the map, um, I'm dead center in it, right? When I look straight east, look just look at how much of the pointer points out from the X when I look each direction. Like, it's the exact same. So I'm dead center on the X. Uh, and I've dug all the way down to bedrock. I mean, if it was like vanilla, it'd be close to the surface. I've dug out sand near the surface. I, for the life of me, cannot find this thing. So either it didn't generate, or this is like a like a false lead or something. I don't know. But whatever it is, I can tell you that it's it's not here. Um, I quit. It sucks. But that does leave me at a bit of a bind. How am I supposed to get the Idol of Labor? There's no quest for it. So... Uh, I'm gonna double check, make sure it's not like hidden here as a 
reward for one of these? No. Nope. So, yeah, where, where the heck do we get an idol of labor from? So, looking online, it turns out that the idol of labor is supposedly found in sphinx-like structures that generate on the surface kind of like, uh, like those pyramids do. So, I guess I'm stuck looking around the surface a bit more for a sphinx. I wish this fog wasn't here. I didn't doesn't really add anything at all to the gameplay. In fact, maybe I can... If I can turn it off, I will, because it's kind of just annoying. Ah, it is a config option. I cannot turn it off in-game. So uh, I'm not going to bother restarting my game for it. But, um, all right, I guess I, I just have to find this this thing. Uh, I'm going to head home first and recharge my mana tablet, because I like to fly, and I'm almost out of bed. While looking for a sphinx, I found a half-generated pyramid. It, like, generated one half of it and then didn't generate the other half. I'm not quite sure what's going on here, uh, but there are a lot of mobs. I was just about to give up and say, screw it, I'm cheating the item in, and I found it. Here's a sphinx. Um, let me show you what it looks like on the minimap, because it's probably the only reasonable way to find it. Just kidding. It's totally useless to look on the minimap for it. I've been trying to look for them both on the minimap and just by running around. Like, contrast to uh, to the other structures, the pyramids that you look for, uh, the pyramids are so much easier to spot on the minimap. But, um, I don't know. I guess it's technically a sphinx. Looks like a giraffe to me. Anyways, I'm pretty sure all you have to do is come into here and... Uh, what bow? You take it out of the chest. An idol of labor. Um, I'm sure there's some inside joke here that I'm not getting. Here lies giraffe. Alright, so maybe it's supposed to be a giraffe. Or <laughs> work to death. He will be missed and replaced. Sure, why not? Um, yeah, I'm out of here. One last thing to do before we can do this recipe, and that is to make the Dark Nether Star Block. So, first of all, how many have one Nether Star? Um, I guess let's start spawning Wither Skeletons and uh, get a bunch more. Let's also spend all 75 levels I have to see if I, how high I can get that looting. So right now we're at 4. Basically, if the option is not looting i just take the cheapest one looting five that's worth 20 levels uh not looking good i guess that's technically cheaper did we get six we got six off of one of the randoms all right well looting six i should make this process a little bit faster I didn't track the exact drop rate of Wither Skeleton Skulls, but it was somewhere around 10% with uh, Looting 6, which is pretty good. Much better than, like, the, what, 2% you get with Looting 3 or something like that? 3%? Um, anyways, now I just have to convert those into actual Wither's. Uh, sorry, into actual Nether Stars. Wither number 8. And Nether Star number 8 to go with number 9 that I already have. Now I just have to melt a whole lot of CDs. Um, I'll probably just throw away the components. Like, when you melt these down, you get uh, cadmium, lead, and PVC. I'm just going to throw everything but the cadmium away. All in all, it took a little bit over three double chests of CDs, or uh, records, whatever, to make enough cadmium. I think it would have taken exactly three double chests, but some of the slots were filled with that. Uh, with seeds so i had to run it a little bit longer but we're good now all right so um last component let's see here 19 blocks all right that's a bit more than i need i only needed 18 uh ruthenium this i believe earlier was split from radium which is yeah we have to process granite and we need a lot all right let me figure out exactly how much i need by my back of the napkin calculations, I expect that it will take about 2,000, a little bit over 2,000 pieces of granite, or 
this much silicon dioxide worth of granite to uh to get enough radium so step one is to turn silicon dioxide into granite at which point we can then take the granite and process it back we get a lot of the silicon dioxide back but uh we get other things as well um does this add up to 100 percent? it's probably close but uh only 6.52 percent of the time do we get radium so um i guess i can i'm sure i can figure something out with the piping to get this to work i hooked up the two subnets we had together and basically this exporter now i have it set to only export granite and I have an interface on this chest so that any granite from both of these chests, uh, I guess no granite gets put into this chest. Any granite from this chest will automatically get sent to the chemical dissolver. And then any um, silicon dioxide that's in here will eventually work its way into here. So uh, this system is now fully self-sustaining and it'll eventually turn all this silicon dioxide into the various aspects that are in granite that are not silicon dioxide so mostly radium um i think i hold on let me pull up my document again i need 144 pieces of radium so let's just let this run for a little while uh i estimate that'll probably take about five minutes all that crafts let's upgrade our mana spreaders here a little bit so that uh, hopefully the final recipe doesn't take forever because I don't know how much mana this takes. This bar just means it takes more than whatever the maximum displayed amount is. It's not one mana pool. I think the full bar is actually just a tenth of a mana pool. But anyways, um, I'm going to make some mana steel, trade some of that for elementium, because I want a Gaia mana spreader. First off, make the elven spreaders. Uh, I only need two, so the fact that I can make exactly two works for me. Um, and I also need some mana dime, or from um, uh, elven diamonds let's go trade again and then we can make a couple gaia mana spreaders it uses the guy spirits but i don't really have a use for those anymore and then we can replace these slow basic spreaders with much faster ones during that time we've produced uh, a little bit over 100 pieces of radium not quite enough but i'm going to start visioning it because the fission system is also not terribly fast so this will turn each radium into two ruthenium, and then I think it's 16 to 1 to make ingots. Eventually, I have enough ruthenium here. Uh, I think let's turn all those into ingots. In fact, if I just put it in here, I think it should automatically grab it. Nope, apparently not. Oh, wait, no, there it goes. Yeah, 18 ingots, exactly the right amount. That should allow us to make nine of these Ooh, exciting turn that into a block and that should be the last item here so we have 11 total items let me double check that we need 11 total one two three seven eight nine ten wait one two three seven eight nine ten eleven all right so that if we put all this onto our runic altar which is now powered by Gaia mana spreaders. It should start blasting it with mana. Go. Yes. Now, oh wait. It's, uh, I guess it takes, I was about to say, I'll come back when this is done. But it's looking like uh, it might actually just take, you know, barely the full amount. So like a tenth of a mana pool. In that case, let's just finish it right now. No need to cut. So, living... Living rock... And do I have a wand on me? And it's ready. I didn't actually pick up the living rock. Whatever. Yoink. We're not going to need the terra steel anymore, right? And with you look at that. We are the volcano master. Dun, dun, dun. No quest for war. All right. But, um... With that, I think we are done for the pack. I gave it a little bit of thought about how to like blow it up, but I kind of, you know, I, I, I drew up a big blank. There's no fancy TNT. Uh, there's no Draconic Evolution, Industrial Craft to blow things up. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. 
if you have any ideas on I guess I can make it special for blowing it up afterwards. But I think just this once, I mean, we're already surrounded by lava. We didn't actually leave the volcano. So uh, I think we don't need to blow things up today. With that, um, yeah, that's it for the series. I hope you guys liked it. I had a lot of fun playing this pack. Uh, I really like the being able to play with a lot of different mods, like the um, so Prodigy Tech, the Hearth, Hearthwell, I think it was called, um, and the Alchemy mod. We're all, all fun stuff to play with. Uh, mixed in there was Embers, which I'm still not the biggest fan of. Calculator was fun to revisit again, even if its documentation uh, is a little bit lacking. But yeah, um, thanks to the uh, author of this pack. I think his name is like Al One Thirty Two. His or her, I, I don't, or you know, I don't know their gender. But uh, they, I think they did an excellent job on this pack. It was very fun, um, and I'll keep a close eye on what else, what other magic they whip up in the future. But um, yeah, for, for now, this will mark the end of this series. The next series will probably begin, I don't know, early next week sometime, maybe, maybe on Monday, maybe a little bit later. In the meantime, uh, any days that I would normally have a video that I don't, um, because I haven't started the next series, I will instead just stream Continuum in the evenings. So if you are, uh, you know, you can, basically if you can't go without your daily dose of Minecraft, go ahead and check out my streams. Um, until then, yeah, and so until the, I start the next series, I hope you guys have some great days and see you with whatever I have coming up next. Take care. Bye-bye.